Family Theater presents Jean Lockhart, Kathleen Lockhart, and Betty Lynn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents transcribed The Dunbar Conspiracy, starring Jean Lockhart, Kathleen Lockhart, and Betty Lynn. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Dunbar Conspiracy, starring Jean Lockhart as Mr. Dunbar, Kathleen Lockhart as Mrs. Dunbar, and Betty Lynn as Dot. not lose our temper. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no intention of losing my temper. Andrew West is my friend, and furthermore, and I'm sure my colleagues here will bear me out, I am a level-headed man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. But, in regard to Mr. West's proposal that we drop athletics at this university, I am absolutely... Ah, uh, uh, Professor? Well, may I say, grievously miffed. <laughs> no, well... Now, now, uh, we're here in committee to discuss this proposal peacefully. We have obligations toward this institution, which I feel make it necessary for me to make my proposal to the board of directors on Monday. We are going overboard in athletics, and our educational standards are suffering because of it. Andy, that's balderdash. Temper, temper. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, most of us are aware of the financial burden our college carried for so many years prior to taking an active part in competitive intercollegiate sports, right? Yeah, well, yes, and in agree. spite of that financial burden <laughs> and the accompanying low salaries, most of us labored diligently to see that our school would continue to have the same high standards of scholastic endeavor. The standards remained high, but the school continued to lose money. It became a matter of adopting a new policy, a policy which might attract new students or closing the college. It was a matter of sports with its gate receipts and new students or bankruptcy. But, Professor, that was an emergency measure we no longer need. No longer need. But according to your logic, Andrew, momentum alone is enough to carry us. The fact that the train's in motion doesn't mean we may safely remove the engine. I'm sorry. Perhaps I see this thing in a different light than you, but I must go through with my proposal. All right, all right. Anything further? Doesn't anyone have another argument? No? Nothing? Meeting's adjourned. <laughs> It's a bad day. Uh, and this thing is frightening, you know. That young man before the board, he could talk an Eskimo out of his long underwear. Now, Claude, we still have the weekend. Well, I, I don't know. I still have the feelings of impending doom. Some days the birds don't even sing. It's not Monday yet. Something might happen. Hello, Dad. Home from school? Yes, honey. Help you off with your coat? Thank you. Uh, where's Mother? In the kitchen. You look simply dead on your feet. Well, I am a little dead, yes. Anything wrong? I mean, really wrong? Oh, nothing that a few years of labor and heartbreak and tears won't change. Well, that's nice. Hello, Mother. Hello, home from school? No. Where does a man go to get a little peace and quiet? Oh, I was just mixing a little chocolate oh. frosting. I made a cake to put under it. Well, that's nice. <laughs> you sound as if you need a cup of coffee. Girls, we have a problem. Too bad the cake's not frosted. Please, I don't want any cake or coffee. Now sit down, please. There. Is that better? What's up? Uh, perhaps you ladies remember the spiritless pre-athletic days at our college. Why, yes, I suppose so. Mm, pretty grim. Exactly. What students there were, roaming the campus and the village streets, were listless, dispirited folk, 
Entirely lacking in the vitality that should be a part of college life, correct? Correct. Those days seem a little drab. Vitamin deficient, you might say. Yes, you might. What are you trying to sell? Saddest of all, there's a movement afoot to drop athletics from the curriculum and the extracurriculum. Just like the old days. Well, what are you doing about it? I'm coming to that. Andrew West, uh, you, you've met him on a couple of occasions. Oh, huh? I know him quite well. He gave me my speech courses last year. Oh, yes, that nice-looking young man. He's fairly new, isn't he? New? He's been here two years. At a university about to celebrate its 102nd anniversary, Mr. West would not be exactly thought of as a charter faculty member. <laughs> well, what about him? At Monday's meeting of the board of directors, he intends proposing that athletics be dropped. And the directors, being of the old school, will probably listen. And he seems so nice. Yes, I thought so, too. Will they listen to so young a man? I would. You see, he's a very... What did you say, Dorothy? Oh, get on with it, dear. Oh, uh... Oh. Yes, well. Um, the, the man is a natural salesman. Personable, intelligent, self-assured. Dorothy, what are you nodding your head for? I'm sorry. The man's alert. And to add to the problem, he's convinced of his arguments. Are you going to try to shout him down? I hope I'll not have to shout, but I certainly intend trying to down him. They'll listen to you. Sure they will. It's kind of a shame. You'll gobble him up like an apple. Perhaps, but not in one gobble or without the groundwork. He isn't a stammering schoolboy. Oh, you'll cut him down to size in a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> according to present plans, it might take a little more than a minute, my dear. What are you plotting? Oh, just a little handicapping, my dear. Uh, Mother, will you hand me the telephone? With your permission, ladies, we're going to have a weekend guest. <laughs> what time is it now? Just six o'clock. Ah, then I should be going to pick up our guest. Uh, Dorothy, did you remember about the bed springs? I fixed them, but it seemed like a terrible thing to do. After all, he is a friend of mine. As uh, Hippocrates uh, prescribed... For extreme diseases, extreme remedies. The poor man probably won't sleep a wink. No. Now, where did I put my coat? Here, on the coat rack. Oh, yes. What about what you've always taught me? The end never justifies the means. Uh, now, my dear, we're doing nothing wrong or criminal. It only seems wrong and criminal. There's no evil intended. Just a little plain and fancy handicapping for the sake of the school. It isn't as if we're doing anything morally wrong. Certainly not. Of course hmm. not. We're just creating a monster, that's all. Nonsense. Uh, my hat, please. Here you are. Thank you. I simply intend to see that he's not quite as sharp as usual when it's time for that board meeting Monday morning. He's young. I'm old. But at the end of this weekend, I've planned that he'll feel as old as I am. We're merely starting the race even. Just a little handicapping. Don't you agree, Mother? I suppose so. And it won't hurt him a bit. It'll be a good, wholesome, tiring workout for him. Might even be just the thing for him. Toughen him up. This could kill him. Well, easy come, easy go. Mother! Well, I'm off. You know, sometimes I think he really is. Oh. <laughs> A beautiful evening for a drive, eh, Andy? Would you try it once more, Professor? All right, once more. <sighs> uh, afraid not. Uh, maybe I should take a walk back to that gas station, huh? Uh, I believe they'd be closed by this time. You think so? Uh, do you want me to push for a while? Well, I... It's all right, it's all right now. My back hasn't gone out on me in quite some time. I think it might hold up all right. No, now. no, no. I'll push, Professor. Uh, in all likelihood, the car will start when we roll down this hill. You see, we're going up a hill now. Yes, I'd noticed. Well, take heart, my boy. Only a block or so and we'll have this thing licked. Huh? I suppose you're right. Well, I guess I'd better get my shoulder to the wheel again. Very applicable. But sometimes to travel in happy anticipation is better than to arrive. Are you ready? Uh, ready. Lay on, Macduff. Well, we're not making much progress, my boy. Professor, are you sure you have this car out of gear? Oh. Oh. Am I supposed to take it out of gear? Ah. 
I'm afraid the soup isn't warm enough for you, Mr. West. May I reheat it no, for no, you? No, no, it's fine, Mrs. Dunbar, just fine. Thank mm, you. You've reached the point where I couldn't keep it on the fire any longer without calling it stew. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known how late you'd be. You know, I was certain, just certain, the car would start on that hill. You mean you let Mr. West push that great big car all the way home? Well, fortunately, we got a push right at the bottom of the second hill. No harm was done. I think it's terrible. I've never heard of such a thing. Oh, now, I don't think we can blame anyone. Those things just happen. You're yeah, just part of the game. Part of the game. Well, I'll tell you what uh, uh, Speaking of games, Andy, do, do, you, do you play chess? <laughs> well, I, I'm afraid no one's ever had the patience to teach me, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, we'll take that up right after dinner, eh? <laughs> Looks like you've won again, Professor. And now, uh, how about another quick game? Uh, you, your luck will change. Oh, I'm afraid I'm about all used up. It must have been... Uh, pardon me. Must have been the exercise. I see. Well, then, I'll show you to the room we've picked out for you. It's Martha's pride. She decorated it herself, from the mullioned windows to the redwood door. Uh, sure you wouldn't like one more quick game, West? Hmm? West. West. Hmm? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must have dozed off. Well, maybe we'd better be getting you to bed. You've got to be in good shape for that pre-breakfast ride tomorrow. Oh. You know, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I've never been on a horse before. Well, <laughs> then it should prove quite an experience for you. We have a couple of horses that have never been ridden before. Oh? Uh, you're kidding, aren't you? Of course. The countryside is very beautiful this time of year, too. Yes, I imagine it would be. Here we are. This is your room. Oh, why, this is beautiful. Ah, thank you. Mrs. Dunbar decorated it herself. I believe I mentioned that, though, when you were napping. And that old-fashioned four-poster. Yes, quite a bed, isn't it? Looks like George Washington might have slept in it. Well, as a matter of fact, there, there is a story about this bed. George Washington? Uh, no, uh, Aaron Burr. Oh. He slept in it? Uh, you could say that. Uh, he, he's supposed to have died in it. Uh, but it's still quite a good bed. Feel those springs. Oh, yes. I think I know what killed him. Uh, pardon me? Uh, I can hardly wait to crawl in. Well, now, I think you've everything you need. I think so. Well, good night, then. Good night. Oh, uh, uh Professor Dunbar. Yes? Uh... What time will we be going on that ride in the morning? Oh, not till fairly late. Good. Yeah, 6.30 or 7. Uh, 6.30 or 7? Well, good night, Andy. Oh, good night, Professor. Get any sleep at all last night, Andy? Oh, yes. I, I really had quite a delight. No, I mean really. Uh, well, aside from a rather fitful dream about Aaron Burr, I'm afraid I didn't fare too well. At least not until I'd tied some of the springs back in that bed. Oh? Yes. Uh, they'd come undone in some way or other. I can't imagine how. Oh, Andy, sure you can. I could tell you. You could? I'll tell you if you want. I want. You know, Dorothy, I, I can't get over the feeling that I've known you for a long time. A long time? That's very flattering. The truth. I feel I've known you at least, oh, at least a year. Oh? Uh, now tell me, how did the springs come untied? At least a year. Well, what's the matter? Did I say something? I was in your class for two semesters. You were? Last year. I have known you for a year, but apparently... Oh, you're... well, you... You've changed the way you fix your hair. No, I haven't. Well, there are so many youngsters, I... Youngsters? Uh, no, no. <laughs> what I meant was, uh, well, I'm not usually one to forget a pretty face. Well, thanks uh, again. Is, I, I, I mean to say, now, I could no more forget you than I could forget... Well, than I could forget... Uh, Go on, you're getting better. Uh, than I could forget my own sister. Your sister? Uh, no, Dorothy, no. Shall we see about breakfast, Mr. West? Giddy up. Oh, no. No, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you still look 
look like the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm in excellent shape. I lost very little sleep. Then why don't you open your eyes all the way? I always awaken gradually, that's all. More coffee? Mm, just a touch. Say when. When? <laughs> I'm very much concerned about something. The sugar. Why the sugar? Uh, the sugar's for the coffee. I'm concerned about our daughter. I don't think her heart's in this business. Oh, her heart's in it all right. But I'm afraid it's on the wrong team. Dorothy! Good morning, Mother. Father. Uh, where's Andy? Unsaddling his horse? When I last saw him, the horse was unsaddling him. You mean he was thrown? Was he hurt? I really have no way of knowing, but I don't think so. Is something wrong, dear? Wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Absolutely nothing. I'm just doing my share in this little conspiracy. A uh, strategy, my dear. Well, call it what you want. I think I'm going to be good at it. Oh, and if anybody wants me, I, I'm going to take a swim in the river. We'll tell him, dear. Mm, she seems to have had a change of heart. Yes, I think she will be good at it. Yes, a little frightening, isn't it? I just thought I'd stroll down and see if you two had made up yet. Oh, she won't give me a chance, Professor. If I hadn't been so thoroughly in selling, I, I think I'd give up. Where is Dorothy? Over there on the other bank, trying to look coy. She thinks it's all a big game. Every time I swim over there, she comes over here. Mm, I seem to remember another gentleman who swam the Tiber to prove his point. Eight times in one afternoon? No, uh, frankly, Professor... I, I'm so tired, I, I can't focus my eyes anymore. Well, I don't think you'll have to make the trip again. She'll be coming over here in a minute or so. Oh, you think so? Well, she'll have to come. It's time for her to put her hair up for tonight. Why? Oh, didn't I tell you? We're all going to the country club dance tonight. Oh, no. But why undo all the good work? Please, knock on the door. I'd feel better too, Rufus. I'm sure he's asleep. It's nearly three. It's past three. Knock on the door. Well, all right. Yes. Um, Andrew, it's uh, me. Uh, may I have a word with you? Oh, come in, Professor. Door's open. Oh, not in bed yet. Oh, I'm having trouble getting my shoes off. My back's a little stiff. From the car pushing or the riding or... Swimming or dancing or something. Ah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Andrew. My conscience has been bothering me a bit. Your conscience? Well, my conscience, my wife, and my daughter. You see, we've been sort of... Conspiring uh, to wear me out before the board meeting tomorrow morning? Uh, you know... Dorothy told me. While we were dancing tonight. That scamp. <laughs> and you're not angry? Well, I should be. But frankly, I'm a little flattered. No indignation? No misgivings? <laughs> Maybe I'm just too tired. Did she tell you why we think it's so important to keep competitive intercollegiate sports at our college? She paints a vivid picture. It's a necessary thing. In school, as in later life, an exercise in the psychology of laughter, the only real part of our curriculum catering to the spirit and to the play instinct. Uh, but, Professor... And a college without spirit is like a man without a personality. Professor Dorothy told me... But I'd like to sleep on it, if you don't mind. Oh, oh I see. Well, I I'll let you get to bed. Uh, but you're sure there are no hard feelings? No hard feelings. Uh, but, Professor... Yes? Would you help me take off my shoes? Why, you look like you've been in an accident. Yes, it's been a rather strenuous weekend. Oh, yes, Claude, it certainly has. <laughs> well, I heard about it. Say, would you mind telling me just where we're going in such a hurry? The board meeting, Claude, you know. Then, then slow down, slow down. My side's beginning to hurt. The board meeting's been called off. Called off? Well, postponed. I thought you knew I called your house and left a message yesterday. It's postponed till next Monday. I told Dorothy to be sure and tell you. Dorothy? Mother, did you know... Well, there, there's Dorothy at the bulletin board now with Mr. West. Ask her yourself. Ah, yesterday morning. Mm. Dorothy? Oh, 
father. Oh, look, Andy, it's father. Hello, father. Young lady, I... Wasn't it a surprise, the meeting being called off, I mean? It's Not uh... that it would have meant anything anyway. Andy has agreed not to make his proposal to drop athletics, haven't you, Andy? Splendid, splendid. Hi, George Andrew. Professor, Dorothy has convinced me. Well, that's fine, fine. This college should be up to date, keep up with the time. Exactly. In fact, we should get out of the shadows and let some of the light in. That's the way to talk. We ought to thin out those pepper trees and rip that unsightly ivy from the building, Fox. Cut the trees, rip the ivy. Now see here, West. Temper, Rufus. Temper. By George, I'm a level-headed man, but when West here displays the unparalleled brass to... Maybe you think we ought to burn out the grass, too. Well, why not? <laughs> and those stained glass windows in the chapel aren't uniform. We ought to replace them with some good pattern in chicken wire. Chicken wire? Now you've... Uh... <laughs> oh, you've been pulling my leg, have you? Sure I have, <laughs> Professor. And I hope it isn't as sore as mine are. Oh, come on, everybody. Let's all go over to the house and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> And now, once again, Kathleen and Jean Lockhart. Thank you, Tony. Well, dear, how does it feel to be back on Family Theater again? <laughs> now, look, Jean, just because you've appeared on Family Theater more often than I have is no reason... More often? Well, maybe, but it's always a privilege. Even June, our daughter, who spends all her time in New York, has managed to appear on Family Theater. Well, come to think of it, dear, I guess it wouldn't be Family Theater unless it made room for every member of the family. Yes, for every member of every family. After all, Family Theater's whole reason for being is to remind us that we're all brothers under the fatherhood of God and that our individual families can live harmoniously only if we acknowledge that fatherhood. Yes, and it seems to me, Jean, that the slogan of Family Theater sums up the general idea very simply. We can testify to that firsthand. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Dunbar Conspiracy, starring Gene Lockhart, Kathleen Lockhart, and Betty Lynn. Others in our cast were John Stevenson and Leo Cleary. The script was written by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present Hop, Skip, and Jump, starring Audrey Totter, Charles Coburn, and Don Taylor. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Oh.